This is the histological appearance of lichen sclerosus. More of that later. Lichen sclerosis is a skin condition that mainly affects the genital area. These include the penis, vulva, perineum, perianal region, and rarely it may affect other areas including the arms, chest, breast and shoulders. As BXO has already been covered in a previous episode, I shall concentrate on lichen sclerosis of the vulva. Lichen sclerosis accounts for approximately 30 to 40% of non-neoplastic vulval skin lesions and tends to affect postmenopausal women most frequently, but it can also occur at any age, including children. Other terms for lichen sclerosis of the vulva include lichen sclerosis etotropicus or LSETA, vulval dystrophy and chlorosis vulvi. It is thought lichen sclerosis may be autoimmune as it is associated with some autoimmune diseases such as those involving the thyroid, alopecia areata and pernicious anemia. Lichen sclerosis may also be familial and there is some evidence that there may be hormonal imbalances such as low testosterone levels and topical testosterone may be an effective treatment. Lichen sclerosis is one of a group of skin conditions that may develop on damaged skin and this is called the Kerbner phenomenon. Symptoms of vulval lichen sclerosis include itching, burning, dyspareunia and tearing and bleeding of the skin but the condition can be asymptomatic. In Around 90% of cases of lichen sclerosis of the vulva, the condition is multifocal and it tends to involve the labia minora, majora, clitoris and perineum. The vagina is also occasionally involved and 80% of cases are bilateral. The appearance of lichen sclerosis of the vulva in the early stages include irregular white patches, red and brown areas and a thin, fragile skin that bleeds easily. In the later stages the skin becomes shiny, wrinkled and the labia become atrophic and the introitus becomes narrowed. Histologically the epidermis is usually thinned, hence the term lichen sclerosis atrophicus, but the epidermis may on occasion be hyperplastic so the term lichen sclerosis is actually a better term on its own. Other epidermal changes include hyperkeratosis, hypogranulosis, spongiosis, vacuolization and squamatization of the layer of basal cells and a thickened basement membrane. The characteristic histological feature of lichen sclerosis is the thickened band of subepithelial collagen that is sclerosed and beneath this there is a band of lymphocytes in the middermis. This is the typical histological appearance of lichen sclerosis. The epidermis is thinned. Beneath this there is a well-defined band of pink collagen and beneath this there is a band of lymphocytes. Here there is obvious hyperkeratosis and beneath this there is hypergranulosis, both features of lichen sclerosis. Here is the thick basement membrane, it is the thin pink line running along the interface between the epidermis and dermis. The white spaces in the Epidermis is the appearance of spongiosis. Here the basal cells are vacuolated and have a squamoid appearance, i.e. they are rather flattened. Sometimes lichen sclerosis can regress and this tends to be after puberty or postpartum. 
However, 1 to 5% of cases of lichen sclerosis may progress to squamous cell carcinoma. And here is an example of a squamous cell carcinoma that has arisen in a patient with a background of lichen sclerosis.